Forget about color for this video. Let's focus on value and creating contrast. Monochromatic painting is an incredible way to explore new subjects. It's also a way to plan a painting so you can figure out the composition and value structure before introducing color. Think of it like creating a roadmap for your final painting. In this video, I'm going to show you how I painted two different value studies. Our subjects for today are these two colorful doors. Before I painted them in color, I painted them as value studies. Links to the reference photos are in the video description. I've also included a link to my line drawings so you can paint these too. But first, let's talk about why it's important to do a value study. Why take fun, colorful photos and paint them with one boring color? Because it's the quickest way to improve your watercolors. Getting the correct values is more important than matching colors. A value study is a one color painting where you focus on tonal value rather than color. Usually a value study is simplified into only two to four values. I like to use four values, the white of the paper plus a light, middle, and dark value. Along with the line drawings, I've provided you the reference photos simplified to these four values. You can use any color to paint a value study, but it's best to use a color that can create a full range of values from very light to very dark. I recommend indigo or neutral tint. In this video, I will use indigo. In general, you paint a value study from light to dark. Paint the lightest value first, covering everything that is not white. Once the lightest value is dry, paint the middle value, covering every area that is middle value or darker. Once the middle value is dry, paint the darkest value. Continue that process for every area of your painting to build up the values from light to dark. In this first video, I'll show you how to paint these two value studies. Then, in my next two videos, I'll show you how to paint each door in full color. Subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss upcoming videos. Let's start with the turquoise door value study. I've flipped my paper upside down so I can paint the upper wall area, which is a light value. I'm wetting that entire area except for the window well, which has some white highlights in it. I'm carefully going around the window. Now I'm painting on a very watery mix of indigo. As I apply it, I realize it's too dark for this light value that I want, so I start adding in more water. Since I'm working on wet paper, I can flood that paint with clean water to lighten the color. Now I'm adding more pigment at the top to darken that area of the wall. I have too much water on my paper, so I'm tilting my board to the side so I can soak up that extra water with a tissue. While this layer is still wet, I'm also going to paint inside the shadow area of the window well. The lower part of the wall, the sidewalk, and the steps are a slightly darker value. First, I'm just using my brush to wet those areas. Then I'm adding more pigment to create a slightly darker value. I'm leaving the white highlight on the two steps unpainted. I'm blotting that area with a tissue so it stays light because I don't want to lose the highlight on the steps. Now I'm using a light value to paint in the shadows on the door trim. I'm painting the thin shadow lines under each section of the molding above the door. I turned my paper to make it easier to pull the lines towards me. Now I'm adding in that darker shadow to the right side wall that will help define the molding on that side of the door. The front of these columns are not white. I want to give them a very subtle shadow. So the areas I want to remain white stand out more. 
I wet the front of each column with clean water and then drop in that lightest value. I blend it out into the water until it fades to white at the top of each column. The only part of the door trim that I want to leave pure white is the inside left edge of the right column next to the door. That's where our highest point of contrast is going to be in this painting, connecting with the white highlight on the steps. Now I'm painting in the middle value in the window well. I'm painting the middle value over every part of the window that isn't white or the lightest value. Here I'm painting the lightest base value on the door. I started light and then added some darker pigment. I realized right away I went too dark here. I should have left a lighter highlight on the right side of the door. I tried to blot out some paint to capture that, but once I blended it back in, I ended up losing that highlight on the door. That's a mistake that I learned from this value study and something I want to be careful of when I do the final painting. That's one of the real values of doing a value study. It's an opportunity to practice the painting and see what issues you might encounter. Then you can use what you learn to make sure that you get it right in the final painting. Now I'm adding the middle value on the front edge of the steps and they're starting to take shape. Here, I'm darkening the half wall on the right side of the door. In the reference photo, it's a bright green, which is a middle or dark middle value, so I'm making that darker now. Now I'm painting the darkest value in the window well. Here, I'm painting the first layer on the address plaque, which is a medium value. I'm blotting it a little bit in the upper corner to lighten it. While I'm over here, I'm adding a darker, shadowy area to the bottom left side of the wall and the sidewalk. Now, I'm going back to the door trim and adding the darkest value. I'm not covering up the lighter shadows that I painted before, but instead painting the darker areas within those shadows. I'm adding the darkest value on the steps and they really look 3D now. I noticed the lightest value in the window well dried too light, so I'm glazing the light value over it again to darken it slightly. Now I'm starting to add the shadow at the top of the door. This is what's really going to make the door look like it's recessed into the molding. I'm also starting to paint the smaller dark details on the door area, like the lines between the slats of wood. I'm dry brushing to create texture on the door. I like to use my value studies to practice techniques like this so I know if they will work for my final painting. I'm painting a medium value on the door hardware. I'm adding the darkest dark in the crack underneath the door. Notice that the darkest spot is right next to the highlight on the steps and the side of the column which I left white. That is the highest point of contrast and it's what you're going to be drawn to in this painting. It creates a focal point. I'm painting a medium value on the nail heads. When you're adding small dots like this, they might look too dark, and that's why you see me blot them off with a tissue or go back with my dry brush to suck up that extra pigment so I get the true medium value. Now I'm painting the darkest value on the plaque around the frame and on the decoration inside as well as the numbers.
I'm painting the darkest value on the door hardware. I'm using a small number two round brush for these little details. Here, I'm painting the darkest area of shadow at the top of the door. I realized I was missing a line on my pencil drawing because there should be a medium tone shadow below this area, so you see me adding that back in now. Okay, now I'm painting a dark value onto the nail heads. I'm painting small crescent shapes at the bottom of each circle to create a form shadow for each nail head. With those finishing touches, the turquoise door value study is complete. In my next video, I'll show how I went from this value study to a full color painting. Subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss upcoming videos. Now I want to show you how I did the value study of this Moroccan door. Overall, this door has more medium and dark values than the last example. I'm starting here with a wet on wet layer over the entire paper using my lightest value which is a very watery mix of indigo. I'm trying to leave a lot of white paper in the upper right corner where I see the brightest area on the reference photo. Then I continue to add more pigment in the bottom left corner to build up the shadow area. No matter how dark I go on this wet and wet layer, it's going to dry somewhere between a light and medium value. I won't be able to build it up to the darkest values in this first layer. That's something I need to keep in mind for my final painting because you'll see later that I struggle with having dark enough values on the left side of the painting. I'll show you how I fix that in this value study. And then when you see how I paint the final painting, you'll see how I add an extra layer to get the values right. I'm using a tissue to blot out some of the paint to create the dappled light effect that you see in the reference photo. When I'm done with that, I wipe up the edges of the tape and let this layer dry completely before moving on to the next step. Now that it's dry, you can see how much lighter it is. We're gonna start painting the middle value shadows around the door. What I loved about this reference photo is that the shadows are two layers. There's a lighter shadow and then there's a darker shadow within it. So for the value study, I'm painting both the darker and lighter shadow areas together in the medium value first. Then once that's dry, I'll come back in and paint the darker shadow area with the darkest value. I'm realizing here that these details are very small and I'm using my small number two brush. I'm already feeling like when I paint this in color, I want to paint bigger. This is a five by seven and I wanna paint a seven by 10 size so that I can use a bigger brush or even just use this brush more comfortably to paint in these fine details. So another thing I learned while working on this value study was that I need to draw my pencil lines a little bit darker so I don't lose my guidelines in the shadow areas when I paint over the pencil lines with multiple layers. Now I've connected the shadow at the top of the door to the shadows above. Then I decide to just fill in this whole left side because I know that the base value isn't dark enough over here. It's not even a mid value and I need to darken that up. This is not how I wanna do it in the finished painting. Ideally, I would have that darker base value in there before I start adding the shadows and darkest values. Now I'm starting to add texture on the door using dry brushing. As I add texture, I'm also building up the values on the door. I want to be careful not to lose the lightest area of the door where the sunlight is hitting. So I'm still adding texture there, but it's a lighter value than what I'm adding on the left side of the door. 
I'm painting a medium value on the door hardware and the shadows around the door hardware. This is another area where I feel like it's just too small to paint the type of detail that I want, so this will be easier when I paint larger for the final painting. I'm going in with that same medium value to paint the cracks on the door. I'm keeping them lighter on the right side of the door where the lighter values are, and I'll start to make darker lines on the left side of the door. I'm using that same medium value on the nail heads, but it looks really dark in those tiny dots. I go back with my dry brush and suck up some of that pigment so it looks like the correct medium value. Another reason I love value studies is they're a relaxing way to paint. There's no color mixing and less brush cleaning. You can focus on your technique without worrying about color. Now that all the middle value areas are done, I'm ready to add the darkest values. When you're painting the medium values, you might feel like your painting is not going to work out or that it's not popping enough. But once you put those darks in, it will all start to come together. You'll start to see the contrast between the light and the dark, and everything starts to look more realistic. So don't give up before you put in your darkest value. I really like how this is turning out, but I cannot wait to try painting this on a larger scale. This is just too much small detail at this size. If you're anything like me and tend to overwork your paintings, value studies can help by forcing you to simplify and limit your layers. Once you've painted all the values, you're done. Okay, we're about to enter one of the areas where I struggled the most with this value study, and that's where the shadow from the door runs into the leaves on the left-hand side. In the value study, they are the same dark value, so I'm connecting them all together but I think it looks confusing. I think when I do this final painting, I will remove the leaves that overlap the door frame because I don't want to lose the pattern around the door. After painting this value study, I also adjusted the line drawing to remove those overlapping leaves and to clear up this large shadow area that I didn't draw correctly the first time. Here I'm darkening this area to create a separation between those two levels of the wall, but this isn't really the way I should have done this. When I re-examined this value study against the reference photo, I realized I didn't get the values right in the bottom left hand corner, so I'm going to do the final painting differently. Now it's time to add the dark shadows in the door area. I'm connecting the shadow under the top edge of the door to the darker lines running between the planks on the door. I'm also going to connect the shadow into the darkest texture on the door. I still need to go darker here in the bottom left corner of the door, so I'm using more dry brushing with the darkest value to bring out that edge of the door and add some more texture. I think for my final painting, I need to make sure that I get the values correct in the middle values before I start adding my darkest values. Here I'm adding the tile detail at the bottom of the door and there's very little of it showing on this small paper. So that's another reason I'm excited to go larger for the final painting. I want to see more of that tile detail below the door.
Now it's time to add the darkest details on the door. The left door handle is all in shadow, so it's actually very dark. Still, I went too dark here and there is too much contrast with the door. The door handle stands out too much, so that is a lesson learned for my final painting. I love this part where you add the dark shadows under the hardware and it makes them pop out. Here, I've decided that the left side of my painting still is not dark enough, so I'm glazing over it to try to correct that value. While I'm at it, I'm using the same watery indigo glaze to paint leaf shadows on the wall. Now I'm going back in to put the darkest detail on the nail heads and finish the lines on the door. And that's it for this Moroccan door value study. I struggled more with this one because I didn't go dark soon enough on the left hand side of the painting. I want to do that differently in my final painting. I also learned that I need to simplify my line drawing to clean up the shadows and remove the overlapping leaves. I think that will make for a stronger painting. I really love doing value studies like this because I get to explore my subject and try out different techniques without the risk of ruining a painting. It's a chance to learn what not to do when I paint the final version. Here I'm adding one more glaze on that left side of the door because there was too much contrast with that left door handle. I'm trying to get out all my mistakes here on this value study. I can learn from the mistakes I make here so my final painting will be stronger. Your finished value study is a roadmap for your final painting. Use value studies as a way to simplify, practice, and experiment. In my next two videos, I'll show how I went from these value studies to full color paintings. Subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss upcoming videos.